So what is insomnia? Insomnia is defined as the inability to fall asleep, stay asleep, or having non-restorative sleep. It's a very common disorder seen in our population, affecting about 58% of Americans one time or another. It can also be a sign or a symptom of another disorder, medical disorders such as diabetes, thyroid disorders, benign prostate hypertrophy, or mental disorders such as anxiety and depression. So insomnia can be classified into two different types of insomnia, acute versus chronic. Acute insomnia is when you have a known triggering factor and your insomnia lasts for less than a month. When your insomnia lasts for more than a month, it's then called chronic insomnia. Chronic insomnia can be further classified into adjustment insomnia, which is, there's a known triggering factor, it's lasting a little bit longer than one month. Psychophysiologic insomnia, where the person is left with behaviors or ha sleep habits that further perpetuate their insomnia. Paradoxical insomnia, when a person may be sleeping a lot more than they think. Insomnia due to mental disorders, which is usually anxiety or depression, and insomnia due to medical disorders, such as diabetes, thyroid problems, hypertension. You can also have insomnia due to inadequate sleep hygiene. Many people don't practice good sleep habits, and that will lead to insomnia at night. Chronic insomnia can also be called primary insomnia versus secondary insomnia. Primary insomnia is when you cannot trace your insomnia back to any definitive cause. Secondary insomnia is when you have a direct cause, such as a medical disorder or a mental disorder, leading to insomnia. So those are the different types of insomnia, and an extensive history is needed to determine what type of insomnia that you may have. So insomnia is a very common complaint in primary care, um, and there are several different things that can contribute to it. Um, basically, insomnia is when people have trouble either falling asleep or staying asleep. Um, many times it can be something big that's gone on in their life. They're starting a new job, they have um, a big test or something the next day, or they've had the death of a loved one, something life-altering. Um, but other times it can be medication related. Um, steroids for one, alcohol, caffeine, all can contribute to uh, having trouble sleeping. If you're having trouble sleeping, the first thing to do is take a look at your lifestyle and make sure that you're in good health and that your habits are not interfering with your sleep. Getting exercise and taking care of the stress in your life is also really important. If that's not enough though, you might be interested in taking medication. Medications can offer a temporary fix for insomnia and if your sleep is disrupted by something that is transient in your life, then medication might be a really good option. The problem with medication though is that it doesn't fix the underlying problem. So if you're really not sleeping because you're under tremendous stress or you're depressed or there are things going on in your life that you feel are out of control, when you stop taking the medication, the sleep problems will resume. So if that's the case, you can consider also getting some psychotherapy. Cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia has been proven scientifically and has been found to be more effective than medication alone. That's because it treats the underlying cause of the insomnia and gives you strategies to handle the natural variations in sleep that happen day to day. So there are different options available to you if you're having trouble sleeping, and the right solution is going to depend on your situation. If you need help making a decision, talk to your doctor about it, because your doctor can give you some helpful guidance.